when I'm training young dogs, very often I'm, I'm only asking for little small things. Um, so, you know, I might be saying lie down, lie down to a dog and you're not really seeing much of a lie down, but he might just stop for a second in a stand and I'll take that and then I'll release him again. Or when I'm doing, uh, you know, off balance flanks, it might be only like, like a yard off balance to the off balance side he's given me at start. So it's that little thing. And I liken it, you know, in dog training, say if, if I want to get up in this thing here, you know, it's, uh, you know, you have to kind of get up and jump up to get on it. And so there's an easier way, like we could, <laughs> You know, we could put in a little step like this and so that's simple enough to get up when we put in the step and so it's a little bit like that with the, with the stops and the off balance flanks and little things like that I'm only asking for a small bit at the start just a little step and then when they get to know it I take away the step I take away the help and the thing I see in clinics a lot is that people forget to take away the help and what happens is that the dog actually starts to train the people. And you see it with maybe, maybe when they're sending their dog, they have to get in a certain position or stand in front of them a bit and they have to say, away, and they're doing a big thing like this. And what they don't realize is that if they take away, the, if they close their mouth and they just do all this movement, that that's actually the command. So that's like the non-verbal command. Or so, if I want him to, to come by and maybe I walk this way to get him to come by on the sheep, little things like that. I, I can't exactly think of ones now this minute, but you see people doing some funny things. And, and those funny things were fine at the point where they were trying to get the dog, where they were the little step, where they were to get the dog, you know, to understand what they mean. But the thing is then, is to start to withdraw the help. So, uh, I'm trying to think of it. Maybe sometimes you see me, I'd have an arm out like this, where I'm just trying to get, you know, I'm trying to move the dog's balance around. And maybe for an off balance flank, for example, I can't think of a specific one now this minute. But what'll happen is I'd be doing that. Or maybe, you know, when I'm starting to teach a young dog to, to stop, I might be walking into him like this with my hands up, making myself big. And, but the thing is, it's the start, when you start to get the stops now, it's the start to wean away all that help. Very often I'll tell people, get rid of the stick. Let's see now. Yeah, so this is one I often see in clinics. So it's like, they've got a stick. And so it's like, it's like, lie down, lie down, lie down. And so, if we take away the, the, the verbal thing, because the verbal thing means nothing. That's what the command is. Or if somebody's using a flag, you know, to make the dog go the other way or something, uh, that's fine, that's the little step, but we have to remember to take it away. If the dog understands the verbal command, he doesn't need all the visual help, the non-verbal help. And if we continue to give the non-verbal help, well then he doesn't really need to learn the verbal because he doesn't need to depend on it. And so the way to find out then if your commands are working is to stop giving the help, maybe to put your hands in your pockets. And even little things like, I'll be helping a dog and I'll just move a little bit like this. And it won't look like I'm doing very much, but it's because I've weaned down from the bigger movement and, and just giving the dog that little bit of help. And then after a while, I won't even give that help and be able to just, like with me, open dogs or anybody with their open dogs or most fellas anyway, they could just stand like this, with their hands in their pockets. Uh, there's a, a handler that's won a supreme, and I won't say the name, but we were at an international in a few years ago there, and the judges, <laughs> they were in a sealed sort of a box, so they couldn't hear, they couldn't really hear the commands. And so on the outrun, uh, sometimes the handlers were given commands, they could be given come by whistles and all, but the judges wouldn't know, because all the judges can see is that's all the judges can see. But with one handler, every time he'd command, he'd say, come by, come by. And then he'd go back to Stanley, and then it'd be, maybe the dog would need another lift. Come by, come by. And so, while the, the judges couldn't hear him, <laughs> and the judges could see that he was giving commands. And so, a good thing to do, uh, even, you can see here, I've got the camera on a tripod. It's not that easy to video yourself working a dog, but, even if you set up a camera on a bit of a tripod, if you're training a young dog, and video yourself there just for five minutes and look back at the video and see 
see what you're doing there because very often people some of it's subconscious and it's subconscious because the dogs have trained them to behave like that <laughs> and so it's like the 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 phrase the tail wagging the dog well the tail the dog is actually wagging the handler and he's he got the handler doing all these funny sort of things without the handler even realizing it but a good way to check that is to video yourself or to get somebody to video you working a dog and then at least you can see the tails or uh, or likewise or you can ask somebody you know but probably better get a video just to see exactly what you are doing and what will happen is then when you go out and train afterwards if you've caught yourself uh, with a couple of those tails uh, when you're doing them you'll start to realize it and you go oh, shit there I am you can see yourself in your mind's eye on the video looking at you so uh, just try and wrap it up here because I'm only talking as I'm thinking the thing that I see in the clinics is a lot of this non-verbal kind of funny stuff backed up with the verbal command but really it's the non-verbal that is the command that that's what the dog is working off so the dog will know the dog is he's picking up everything you're doing and so he'll pick up all those little cues like you'll often see sometimes somebody be setting up their dog for an outrun and the dog will be gone before they send them and you know it's just the dog is preempting it he knows what's coming and so I, I find that a lot of people underestimate their dogs and I mean really if the dog could talk the dog could talk he'd say uh, I'm here with dummy here and he's going to send me now in a minute because I always know he always does that before he sends me and I know which side he's going to send me there and so right I'm gone and uh, and so you need to kind of some people need to just sharpen up a little bit and get you know another eye looking at them so that they can see see what the dog sees